Hi, Ryan Michael Galloway here with We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company.com. Still talking to Dave Williams from the Vault Studios in uh, Houston, Texas. And um, so, Dave, we were talking about those little things that devil you, the rattles and that kind of thing. I want to talk about uh, some things around the, the tone of some of the drums that you're recording, and I wanted to start with the bass. Um, I. Uh, you know, I'm of a school where, uh, at least in the old days, we tried to make the bass drum pretty tight sounding. In other words, not a lot of ring. In fact, in some cases, no ring at all. But now, as I've gotten a little older and listened to some of the stuff and how it sounds and how it mixes, maybe a little bit of, of resonance is good. First of all, what, uh, I mean, does it depend on the kind of music you're playing or do you tend to go with a slightly more resonant, slightly more slightly ringing uh, drum set, uh, I mean, a uh, bass drum? Or do you try to make that thing as tight and as dead as possible? And how do you do it? Uh, it's, it's definitely uh, all determined by the tight music that you're doing. And, you know, the, uh, the bass drum or the kick drum uh, has been a, a, a problem for Eon. Um, a lot of folks have a hole in the head in the front and they stick the microphone inside the bass drum with some acoustical cushioning in there and you can come up with a very tight sound but you're also coming up with a very unnatural sound your head is never inside of a bass drum listening to the sound it produces good point. Now, if it's rap or hip-hop you sometimes want a very deep tight sound and then you can affect it later with some gated reverbs or what have you but in take for instance in uh, rock music you may want to mic it outside of the bass drum head. You know, depending on the sound of the kit, I've had occasion to put the bass drum mic maybe a foot away from the head or angle it in so it doesn't pick up the, uh, the, the concussion of the, of the uh, kick drum, you know, uh, hitting the, um, the, the, the beater hitting the, hitting the head. Yeah, yeah. Um, or sometimes, you know, I may want to just put it a little bit inside of the drum to where you can still get a little ambient sound but the, but, but the whole idea is, and Ryan, think back to music in the 60s. I don't care if it was the Everly Brothers or the uh, Four Tops. Uh -huh. There was a, a, a little ring in the bass drum. Chances are they only had two or three microphones on the whole kit. So what you were hearing is a lot of ring. Today, they're, they're starting to reintroduce that, and that's become hip again. Uh, music in the 80s and 90s, everyone had a tight kick drum, tight snares, almost no toms. No crash symbol, no, no ride symbol, a little bit of crash symbol. Now they're allowing drummers to be a bit more expressive and play the kit. And to hear the kit naturally, what, what I like doing is recording a group so that when you ultimately hear them live on stage, you should almost hear the same sound in the live arena as you heard on the record. I got you. I got you. So a very alive sound, you know, so to speak. And, and I, yeah, now, now, now even live, you know, your, your, your kick drum is going to, you know, be gated a little bit or what have you. They're, they're going to they're gonna treat the overall sound to make it as clean as possible. I mean, because, like, the Reliance Center here wasn't built for music, so you have to. I, I'm going to talk to you a little bit that in, in a segment or two here uh, about some of the electronic stuff, still working on some of the acoustics. Uh, let me go to an, another segment here, and uh, and we'll talk in uh, in the next uh, post about something around resonance on some of the other drums. Um, and folks, I'm with David Williams, and he's with Vault Studios in the Vault Studios in Houston, Texas. And uh, I'm Ryan Michael Galloway, and we don't need no stinking record company com. <laughs> I love the name of your company. <laughs> love that, don't you? I love it.